What's up guys? This is Shauna aka Mrs. Wealthy Wallet coming to you for another week. Y'all are from Atlanta so I always like to, <laughs> I'm sorry, I like to throw the A all the time. Born and raised in Atlanta. Um, yeah, so this week we're going to talk about growing, growing the gap so stay tuned. Yeah, guys, I want to talk to you all about growing the gap. Growing the gap is basically giving yourself a little leeway, a little space, a little comfort, you know, a little something, something, just in case, you know, you are historically known <laughs> for overdrawing accounts. Y'all, mm, before I grew that little gap, let me tell you, I did it at least once a year in one of our accounts, and it was not cool because I thought, oh, yeah, the money's going to be there, and it wasn't. And yeah, those fees don't play. So in order to not have to pay overdraft fees and penalties on top of penalties on top of penalties, we want to grow that gap. So last week we talked about being on a no spin. So this week should be your no spin. So while we're doing our no spin and we're getting a little bit of change in our pockets, dollars, hundreds, whatever you're accumulating, you know, have a little something set to the side in order for you to grow the gap. Now, one way that I would use to grow the gap was to do the roundup. So you all uh, probably have heard about it before. Whenever you spend money, round it up. So if it's $25 and one cent, save the 99 cents, but write it in your ledger as in $26. Oh, that's $26 is gone. Eh, block it out of your mind. And just keep doing that. Everything you do, just keep doing that. So keep a manual ledger, keep a little computer ledger whatever and just whenever you spend anything plus plus change round up to the next dollar and that way you'll start to build up some money in your account another way to do it is to do a cash envelope budgeting system so a lot of people talk about that they love the Dave Ramsey they love the cash envelopes Whenever you're doing that, whatever change you have left in your category, set that to the side. Don't include that in the next month's category or next week's category and just refill with whatever the new amount is. Then put the money that you had in excess into the bank as your cash cushion. So you can save anywhere from I want an extra $5 in my account in order to keep me from overdrawing. I want an extra $10, $20, you name it. You know, like I said in the last week, I keep half my mortgage payment in our joint account and then for my husband and my account we have our own set amounts I keep fifty dollars in his in the event that he needs cash because sometimes he goes places where he has to pay like parking valet different types of fees for customer uh, to visit customers and things like that so I leave him with money that he can withdraw and for me I don't really need any money so I keep buying around ten fifteen dollars so I have that amount that's set aside that's like, don't touch me, and I ignore it, and I basically, I budget from everything over that. So we just pretend like it's not there, and we just leave it there. Another thing you can do is, as you're starting to grow the gap, and as you're starting to pay your bills and get ahead in your bills, is you can start using the excess and let it accumulate. Now, once you get to the point where all your bills are under control and you got this and that and this paid off, you can start to get ahead of yourself. YNAB calls it a buffer. So what YNAB's buffer is, is that it's actually one entire month's expenses that you have saved up and then you are actually paying for this month's expenses with last month's money so you're not even depending on your current paycheck in order to pay for your expenses. I am working towards that because when I get this student loan paid off, oh, let's take a break. Student loan update guys, here's where I am student loan, here comes the hand and swipe it. Boom, there we go. You all know I am paying off my husband's student loan, I have been paying it for the past more than six years. Okay, uh, 2013 is when I actually started tracking the amount, which was 67000 and some change, but it was over $80,000 when I got a hold of it. So, yeah, guys, it was expensive. I have to tell you all, I took a student loan out. 
I took actually a personal loan out my last semester of school because my father decided that he did not want to pay for my schooling anymore and my mother did not have the money to pay for it. So luckily for me, I had a friend who was working in banking who was able to help me get a personal loan. Personal loans are what, y'all? Do the next month. So I was on a payment payment plan from month one all the way until I paid it off two or three years later. So my husband did take out a student loan. It capitalized, a lot of interest got stacked on it, so it got up to $80,000. I think it was originally half that amount, I believe. And so that's all interest, guys. That is what interest will do to you if you don't pay attention to your loans, if you don't pay attention to your payments and things like that. So pay attention to what you're paying. Let's go back to the regularly schedule. So, yeah, guys, make sure you put a little buffer in there, guys, in order to keep you from going into overdraft, in order to keep you um, on the right side of your budget. Just have a little little bit of something. You may balance to zero, but let that that little three oh, I said three dollars, five dollars, ten dollars, whatever. Let that be your zero. And just pretend like it doesn't exist and keep it rocking because that will help you avoid overdraft fees. And once you get all your stuff under control, start growing that buffer and growing that amount so that you are paying this month's expenses with last month's money. Eventually you'll get to the point where you have so much money I would hope that you start to invest it into retiring and or, oh, no, I'm good, retiring. <laughs> I, I will hope you start investing into retiring, your future, uh, any major purchases you want to make, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, three to six month emergency fund, you know, that that kind of stuff. Start, start moving money like that. But that is what I am going to be working on once I pay off the student loan. I'm going to be working on getting my YNAB buffer. I cannot wait. It is going to be fabulous. I am so excited. How are you all doing with your no spend this week? Uh, let me know. Oh, you know, you'll be just starting. Unless you start on Sunday. Hmm. What day did y'all start on? Let me know down below. So until next time, guys, remember that the best type of wallet to have is always, always, always going to be a wealthy one. Peace.